Simply stunning new findings about kids and their gizmos and gadgets, the texting, the tweeting, the watching TV. What does it really mean for school? For two-year-old Bennett Lambert, it's not unusual to spend some time on a tablet. Our children are surrounded by screens everywhere we look. Happy and healthy. These are the stock answers most parents give when asked what they want for their young children. When deep down, what they really want is for them to be quietly occupied. Hawkins. Um, we have four children and I'm a speech language pathologist for early intervention and preschool children. I'm Robbie Hawkins. I also have four children <laughs> with my lovely wife and uh, I work for the city of Plattsburgh in the public works department. Hi, I'm Professor Bridget Heine. Um, I'm a member, faculty member at uh, SUNY Plattsburgh in the Department of Communication Studies. I teach uh, digital media communication and I'm also a mom of two. I'm Christy Bezrotzik and I am a mom and a special education teacher and the only certified um, DIR practitioner in upstate New York. My name is Crystal Benware. I have three kids. They are uh, just, they're one, three, and five. They're about two years apart, so they're off a little bit right now. I think that there is a huge scare. I think our kids are in crisis and our society is in crisis, and I think um, some of that is because of technology. Well, when I was a child, we did not have smartphones so, or really even cell phones when I was young. I mean, I remember having you know, a rotary dial phone. I remember the broadband startup sound to computers. Our phones still had cords. Somebody picked up the phone, you'd be kicked off the internet, right? You had, and it was a big deal if you got two lines in your house for the internet. Well, I'm a little bit older than my wife, so I, I date back to like the Atari system. When I was a kid, we had Atari, the Commodore 64. I remember Saturday mornings watching TV, but other than that, I, I don't really remember us getting the TV at night. You know, mom and dad might have watched some shows and stuff. When we were a kid, it was something to look forward to. It was something fun to do on a Friday night with your family, but you had one system and you had to share it with your family. And it was like a whole big deal, like a whole family thing. Everybody took turns um, putting in the programming. And today, I feel like it's more individualized. It's not as much of a family event. Um, and it actually takes away from family time. And it's such a sensory-less mm -hmm. experience. It's not sensory-rich. But these kids know like 20 shows now. And I feel like um, they pick it up a lot faster. And it's around us so much more. And now it's their entire world. Everything revolves around technology. The schools are even using so much technology that I think it's easy for these kids just to get used to picking up that, that tablet or that phone and just know how to work it and what to do. Even their schoolwork has something called a Remind app where teachers send out reminders to tell them when homework is due and when to study for a test. And Cumberland Head and all of Beekman Town give out tablets to the students that they keep all year round and they do work on it, and they do homework on it, and they do all of their word processing. It's been proven by the you know, pediatricians all across the world, right, that screen time is not good for children. It does not help their educational growth. Caden, who is turning six soon, he's in kindergarten and already using tablets. We are already seeing a change in attention of students. And we're even seeing in a change of accountability of students because of that. And I don't think anybody is necessarily right now correlating it to the use of devices, but I think in the future, it's gonna be an irrefutable correlation. I think that we're heading in a direction where all the kids will have smartphones and know how to work them. I am so thankful we did not have technology when I was 18. If it was my perfect world, we wouldn't have any of this. We would be at camp all day long, <laughs> every day. Well, I have two children. I have a, a six-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. Um, and my, I'm proud to say my three-year-old still has never really touched a device, aside from we allow him to use our phone to take pictures as the tool that he is really only capable of using. If television is on, I extremely limit what they watch. Um, Caden, of course, being a six-year-old boy, loves Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. And I even get uncomfortable letting him watch those. What I had to watch compared to what they have now is not yeah. the same. No. You know what it's I mean? I, I had three channels. She's not allowed on any social media. She said she's the only child at Stafford Middle School who's not allowed on social media. Um, but I know that's not true because I'm friends with some of the other um, parents. 
But other than that, he's three. He doesn't know what he's doing on a phone. He can push buttons and he can make things happen, but he doesn't understand the causal effect relationship. He's not truly learning anything. They're so used to just being on to have even the noise that half the time they're playing and not even paying attention to it. It's just they're so used to always having something going. Technology is definitely raising our kids and we have so much more to, to worry about. I feel, I feel terribly actually that these kids have to be raised in this generation. The fact that everybody uses their smartphone for everything. Everybody has their calendars on there. Everybody has their uh, memos and shopping lists. If I had to do it over again when our boys, when our kids were younger, I remember telling Ty, our oldest, when he was probably seven, when you're 10, we'll get you a phone. And we kind of stuck with it. Everybody got their first phone when they were 10. Old. If we had to do it over again, I would tell them, when you move out and you get a job, <laughs> you can get your own phone. These kids also would be at a disadvantage if you didn't allow them to have this stuff. They don't need pocket computers. You know, kids can't even go on a 20 minute car ride without watching a show. What is that? When you're sitting there and it's hard to like look out the window and not really have as much as much things to do. We just went on a car trip where we lost service through Speculator and every oh four God. and a half inches was, <laughs> when are we going to have internet? When are we going to have internet? Uh, I'm like, I don't there? know. When do we have internet? When do we yes. have internet? Well, most of the time we don't have internet on car rides, I'm normally sleeping, so I'm normally fine with it. I remember sitting in the car, just staring out the window, being quiet, right? That's that's what I remember doing, or playing the, you know, the, the license plate game or something like that. 20 questions, right? That's what we did in the car. It can get, like, better at sometimes when you can just, like, talk with your family and everything. We're seeing, a, I think, essentially a de-evolution of social communication. Right? We have more and more kids that will say whatever they want on the internet, but cannot even order their own dinner when they're 11 years old in a restaurant because they can't look up from their phone, they can't make eye contact with a stranger, and they can't talk to anybody besides their parents. There's sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, why did I just do that? Or there's no reason for me to go wrestle him just because He's really bad at Fortnite and I'm better than him. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel the more social media grows, the more community shrinks. Um, the more the idea of, you know, talking to one another and socializing face to face becomes diminished through the use of devices and social media because we, you know, I mean, in its nature, a device becomes an individualistic thing. I think some people are embarrassed to say that they're on their phone when their children are home. Um, I think the addiction goes far beyond just children. I think it's the parents as well. You should be talking to them, communicating with them, not trying to fill those void moments with just nothing, right? Just to keep them satisfied and happy. I don't think that's helping anybody. I'm sure there's been the time where I've been like, here, please just sit for a moment, let me finish what I'm doing, but I, I really, really try not to. There are studies out there that talk about this, yet we still convince ourselves as parents that we're doing the right thing and that it's somebody else's fault that our child is stunted in their growth when it is nobody to blame but yourself. Um, I think, honestly, sitting down and talking to somebody is a lost art, and so that's, that's where my heart and where my mind always is. If my kid wants to talk with their friends, then you can call them on the phone, right? You can go over and visit them in real life, like develop personal, interpersonal communication skills in the real world. It means so much to them to have that presence online or to get those friends from that group that are on that app. Say there was a birthday party or something that was happening um, at school and you didn't get invited to it, you didn't know about it. Now everybody knows about it. You know what you're not a part of. You know what clique you're not in. You know if you're missing out on something. Um, and I just, I, I think, I just find that sad. I, there's no reason for that. And I think it, it brings on, it makes kids have to grow up and handle emotions that they shouldn't have to handle at, mm -hmm. at a much younger age. Children are getting this instant gratification um, not learning delayed gratification or any of those delayed responses. So then you see children today who have maybe diagnoses of ADHD or um, they're really compulsive or they're very impulsive and you wonder what contribution screens may have to that. There is nothing that they do during their day that does not involve technology. Our society is changing and I think that's that's probably why I'm so passionate about learning about it and kind of keeping up on it because this is impacting our youngest kiddos and, and our families, and we don't really even know what the impact will be yet.
Get off your phones. <laughs>